Hello, my name is Corey Williams. I'm doing this project video on an Old Testament theologian for Old Testament theology in Dr. Michelson's class. Hopefully it doesn't take too long because I find talking to a camera by myself a little weird. My specific theologian was Samuel Terrian. Uh, he was born and raised in France in the year 1911. Uh, he studied at the university in Paris, uh, the University of the, at the Louvre. Um, he also studied in places like Jerusalem and eventually ended up in America where he stayed from the early 1930s and then eventually taught at the same school uh, in New York City uh, from the late 1930s up until his retirement. Um, that's where he stayed and wrote his books and then he eventually died in uh, 2002 at the age of 91. The majority of Terrian's work was published during the mid-20th century, uh, sort of pointing towards the late 20th century. Uh, and during that time, Terrian really spent most of his work responding to two main major people. One was Walter Israt, who um, had a great biblical standard of theology that basically stated that uh, covenant language covered the whole of the Old Testament, which was fine, but there were still some passages in the Old Testament that doesn't really talk much about covenant language. So Terry in response to that. And then there was also um, Gerhard von Rad, who uh, didn't really want to even admit that there was any overarching theme of the Bible, uh, and specifically the Old Testament. So both of those characterize some of the 20th century theological talk, and Terry really spends most of his time responding to those other scholars during the time. The previous work of both uh, these theologians, as well as many others, allows Terrian to sort of come in and put a fresh perspective on things and fill in those gaps that some of the other theologians had left in their theological understandings. Uh, and that's really the basis of the rest of his work. Uh, so this brings us to Terrian's specific methodology. As I already stated, uh, he really likes to come in after the other theologians have already talked, much like theologians have done for centuries, and respond to their specific problems or nuances that they claim to have found in the biblical text. One of the things Terrian does right away is he defines the difference between systematic and biblical theologians. Uh, he wants to say that both of them are equal in some ways, and they often can work together in a lot of great ways. Uh, and he, in fact, he speaks a lot to the effect of hermeneutics and how that can uh, change the way we view theology. But he also defines himself as more of a biblical theologian. Um, which also he leads leads him to believe that uh, some of the biblical theologians have been too historically inclined, meaning uh, they're putting too much emphasis on, emphasis on the historical aspects of the Bible and maybe not enough on the other theologic and maybe even systematic nuances of the Bible, um, which I think is important because it allows him to define uh, the difference between the two, but also how you should really put the two together to create a successful sort of theological input. Terran also sort of tries to define what theology even is. At the time of his writing, a lot of the people in the field of theological study don't really even like the word theology. Some of them think that it's too uh, confining to what the Bible even has to say. You don't want to put uh, the mental confinements on the Bible. Uh, and Terran even says that as a theologian, he thinks that while the mind is important and necessary in how we think about the Bible, you can't think without your mind, uh, it's not necessarily the only thing because the Bible transcends a lot of the mind, the political, the religious presuppositions that we have. So I guess you could say he sort of wants to define theology as less of a science and more of a religious understanding. One of the methodological contributions that Terrian makes um, to the Old Testament discussion is specifically in the way he responds to Itrat, uh, who thinks, as I said before, that the Old Testament can be defined in a sort of overarching theme, but he picked the theme of covenant language, which is good in a lot of parts of the Bible because there's a lot of covenant language in the Old Testament. But uh, Terrian points out that it really underestimates the power of some of the other parts, specifically wisdom literature. Uh, and Terrian actually specifically identifies wisdom literature as being extremely important to the way we look at Old Testament theology. Uh, he even wrote a really big book on the Psalms, and he said he makes a lot of theological implications from that. Um, and I think he really just attempts to 
bridge the gap between the wisdom literature parts of the Bible and the regular covenant language parts of the Bible. Uh, and really try to make those both equal and say, hey, both these have uh, value in their own parts. Another theologian that Tarion really responded to was Von Rad. Uh, and Von Rad's claim was really that the Old Testament didn't even really have much of an overarching theme. Uh, and that was basically due to the fact that uh, the Old Testament came from so many historical and literary different devices and so many historical situations and contexts that it was really impossible just to sort of throw them all together as one big thing. So Tarion comes in and really says the opposite and says that instead of saying that there's no overarching theme, that in fact you really need to have an overarching theme and it's necessary for Old Testament theology to really take place in the way that we want it to. Uh, without that overarching theme, then breaking it down into the, all these little pieces, it just doesn't have the same effect. It doesn't have the same purpose of what uh, Old Testament really was meant to have. He even states that the inwardness and the homogeny of all the theological depth that binds the biblical, biblical books together uh, supersedes all of the dates and the respective time periods and the styles and the provenances that the, the Old Testament was written in. Then the last big thing that Tarion really tries to do uh, in a separate book, which I found interesting, was uh, he really tries to put um, a perspective on the woman in the Bible. Uh, and this hasn't, isn't the first time that it was done or anything like that. But it really is uh, still important because of the time period in which he worked. Uh, when he was writing and when he was growing up was the time period uh, when women gained the right to vote and when women became uh, really a role in some of the theological discussion. Uh, and before his time and during his time, a woman had no importance in the church whatsoever for the most part. So I think that his view on woman was really important, mostly because he didn't take a sort of woman have the backseat to men's mentality. Instead, he went so far as to even say that in the creation narrative, women came as the saviors to men uh, and their need to have some sort of partner. And I think that was sort of, it sort of puts the perspective of woman in a correct mindset of how we view theology today. So overall, I think that Tarion's uh, methodology and his works were really important to the way we view theology today. Uh, I think that the theologian Simon in general is really important, uh, how we look back at theologians and discover what they said and how that actually shaped what we believe today or how it didn't shape it. And I think that it's important to view like our heritage of theological influence and study. Uh, but so anyways, uh, my name is Corey Williams once again, and I'm done.